Vintage Story is a wonderful game that can be played many different ways. I've said time and time again that one of the main reasons Vintage Story has such great replayability is because of its robust world configuration options. Being able to set up a world to match your playstyle and or current mood is a big reason why I keep playing this game. So let's set up a Vintage Story world! Hi, it's Drax. This is the part at the beginning of the video that everyone skips. For those of you that didn't jump forward, enjoy watching and listening. Might you consider supporting me further by visiting my Ko-fi or clicking on the join button on this video? Alright, that's it. Back to the video. I've created a number of interest story worlds, and every time I do, I think I should document this process to make it easier for next time. In this video, I'll go through the options in the world config, and I'll give some explanation to what they mean to the world you're setting up. First step, launch the game. Okay, now click on single player and then create world. On this page, we see the simple view of world creation. There are two ways to create a world. You can make a selection from the list and start playing, or you can customize and create a world with very specialized settings. Let's go through the options. Starting at the top, we have world name. It has generated one for you, but you can name it whatever suits your fancy. The next section is select a play style. Here we have five options, standard, the default experience, and where I suggest most new players start. Exploration. Looking for something different? This mode for me is find the rad ruins and build an amazing house mode. Wilderness survival. I call this one no house, just roaming. When you die, you basically start over. It's a fun challenge, trust me. Homo sapiens. This version removes all the ruins and the bad guys. So build and survive without noisy distractions. Creative building. Big, flat, barren world with everything unlocked. It's great for showing off that really cool build idea you have. So, if you don't want to mess with the customization and you just want to jump right into the game, go ahead and make your selection and then click Create World. Now you're on your way. But, we're going to make a special Drax world. So at the bottom of the page, I'm going to select Customize. Now looking at the screen, it might seem a bit overwhelming, but it's worth the time getting to know all the options. Each time I create a new world, I end up changing something or trying something new from the list. At the top, we have play style, and these are the same options from the prior screen. You can change it here as well. World height can be adjusted. 256 is the default, and you can increase it to 1526, but uh, it could affect the load times and performance. I almost always leave this as the default. World seed. Just like in Minecraft, there's a place to type a world seed. You can leave this blank or type something fun. Primarily, this is used for grabbing a shared seed from a friend or the internet. Game mode. Survival, which is the default gameplay. You can also set creative here to unlock everything, including flying. Player spawn and death. Start climate. This is the temperature at the spawn location. The default is temperate and can be set to super cold or hot or anything in between. Random respawn radius. When a player dies, you have the option to have them spawn right at the spawn location or a number of blocks away. I like that this is in here. You can set some randomness to the respawn if you want. Grace timer. This has to do with the monsters. This gives you the option to get your bearings before being visited by your drifter friends. Death punishment. This option gives you the choice to keep your bag inventory or leave it where you died, triggering a famous Drax runback. Time for items dropped on death. The default is 10 minutes, which in my opinion is way too short. I always set this to the max. Survival challenges. Season. The default is seasons, but yes, you can set the world to be winter all year round. Player lives. This option lets you set the number of times you can respawn. Infinite is the default. Setting it to one means you only get to respawn once. Lung capacity. There's not a lot happening underwater in Vintage Story, yet. I usually set this to two minutes so I can swim around and take in the sights. Days of the month. This is a big one. The default is nine days. I always tell first time players to stick with that number. However, there is more challenge in more days. True winters. This has to do with crops and animal spawn rates and how the cold affects them both. Block gravity. This is all about blocks falling or moving upon interaction. Sand and gravel are the default. You can add in dirt for even more block moving fun. Cave-ins. This is relatively new to the game. It adds stability to the blocks in a mine. I've been playing with it turned on. I think it adds just a bit more danger to the underground game. Allow underground farming. I like to grow underground, 
So for me, this is a yes. Body temperature hardiness. How cold will it be before you start to freeze without your pants on? Creature hostility. Three options here, aggressive, passive, and never hostile. On passive, they only attack you if you instigate. Ask me how I know. Creature strength. How hard do they hit? Setting this higher will add more hard hitting drifter fun. Player health. This is the total health of the player. Adding more health means greater survivability in the world. I always play with it on the default. Hunger rate. The rate in which your stomach starts to growl. I almost always increase this number to add some extra challenge. Health regeneration rate. How fast will you heal? This is really slow in Vintage Story, so if you want to regen health at a faster rate, you might crank this number up. Walk speed. Want to walk faster or slower? Wait, no one wants to walk slower. Food spoilage rate. I set this higher on our last server, and food was disappearing it was rotting so fast. Be careful with this one. Yes, it can make it more challenging, but it can also make the game unplayable. Tree sapling growth time. How fast or slow will the trees grow? Tool durability. I know a bunch of people who change this setting. They feel the base durability in the game is way too harsh. Turning this up will make it so that you don't have to replace tools as often. Tool mining speed. I don't mind the speed in the game. Part of the progression is getting better tools to mine a bit faster. So I leave this on default. Pro pick node search radius. Just fun to say. This option has to do with the prospecting pick, how far the short scan goes. The default is six. For me, this works. Personal preference here. Global deposit spawn rate. Want more copper, tin, lead, iron, and all the other deposits? Everywhere? Here's where you change that. Micro block chiseling. Yes, I want to chisel everything, all the time, everywhere. Also, please add glass. Coordinate overlay. These are the numbers on the screen and the map to show you where you are. Some people don't use the map or the coordinates. Then add a challenge. World map. Yes, you can turn the map off. Hard mode. Color accurate world map. They changed the map to a less colorful version. I did a video about it, link at the top of the screen. The default map is more in tune with the overall look of the game. This option allows you to have the full color version. Lore content. Do you want drifters and knowledge or not? Uncheck and you'll be all alone. Clutter obtained. Leave it on glue. I love this game mechanic. Basically, you need to create glue to fix the items in the ruins before you can collect them. There's an option for always shatter, but why? Loot Goblin here. Temporal Stability. Temporal Storms. This changes the frequency of the storm. You can also turn them off here. Temporal Storm Length. How long do you want the screen to go all wobbly? Temporal Stability. Turning this off removes the game mechanic altogether. Temporal Rifts. Seen or hidden. These are the red-brown rifts you see throughout the world. Temporal gear respawn uses. Here's where you can set how many times the gear can be used to respawn. You can also make it last forever. Temporal gears are how you set your spawn location in Vintage Story and can be set to a limited use. Sleeping during temporal storms. Dream of a better tomorrow. If you kept the storms turned on, you can sleep through them to skip them if you don't feel like fighting. World generation. Climate distribution. Do you want to have your Vintage Story world mimic the Earth climate? or be just a bit different. These next couple of options, they always get me. Land cover. This one is how much of the world should be covered by land, so 100% equals no ocean. I would like a bit of seawater, so I'll set it to 90% land, which will give me 10% seawater. Less land, more sea, right? Land cover scale. How much land between the sea? Upheaval rate. I always giggle at this one. I find the word upheaval funny. This has to do with big mountains. Geologic activity. Do you want pools of death spawning often? I always change this as I like a little geoactivity in my world. Landform scale. Big continents or many islands. This one's fun to mess around with. Spawn a couple of worlds and see the differences. World width and length. These two are all about how big or small you want the world. Do you want to be able to reach the end in your lifetime or make a giant world that is endless? 
World Edge. Look over the edge or fall over the edge. You choose. Polar Equator Distance. Want to see a polar bear? How far do you want to run? Global Temperature. I love this one. Being able to have an ice world for an all winter run, just damn fun. Global Precipitation. Do you like rain? Adjust the wetness of the world. Forestation and shrubs. More trees for me, please. Surface copper and tin deposit frequency. How often will you see the little surface bits of both tin and copper? Adjust these up almost every time. I love the little bits. Snow and ice. Yes or no to the white stuff. Multiplayer. Land claiming. This is a nice little system for claiming land so griefers can't mess up your rad build multiplayer. Class exclusive recipes. I turn this one off when I'm playing on a single player save. I want to be able to craft everything. Auction house. I like this one on the server. It's an easy way to send something to a player who lives on the other side of the world. You made your selections. You're feeling good. Now press apply and then create world. The world will generate. You're on your way. Now that the world has been generated, you can view the world from the single player menu by clicking on the pen icon. From here, you can see the seed, which you can copy and share. You can also copy the play style. This will make a copy of all the settings you just set. This is handy if you want to use the same settings in a new world. You can also delete, save, and back up here as well. The world config in Venture Story is top notch. I love that you can make the game fit your play style. There are a couple of options I'd like to see added in the coming releases. Do you have some ideas for options in the world, Jen? Share them with me in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. The video's over. Now it's time for you to do your part. Follow, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.